Hi, I'm Craig Tomlin from Startup Smart. I'm here with Alvaro Maz from Code from Australia to talk about uh, his startup journey. Um, hi, Alvaro. Hey, Craig. Good, good. Um, so, tell me about what made you decide to get into startups, uh, into um, Code for Australia in the first place. Sure. So, I guess there's quite a few different ways to answer this, but um, my main motivation to get into um, to start Code for Australia was um, first that the, the interest and, and passion there is within citizens to contribute not only um, their voices but also their hands into doing things differently. Um, not only in a when we talk about government, we talk about um, things that everyone deals with on a, on a daily basis and people are interested in, in changing those things, whether it is from a frustration point of view, but also that they've got skills and knowledge that they can put to good use. Um, the other one is um, its purpose. So I, from my background, I, I think one of the things that I'm interested in is doing work that is purpose driven. Okay. And this isn't your first startup. You've set up companies before. Yeah. So it's my second go at doing uh, this entrepreneurship thing. Okay, yes, but in a slightly different way because this is a, it's a social good mm. enterprise really, yeah. um, but it still has a lot of, you know, I, I suppose a lot of, uh, you have products, so to speak, you mm -hmm. have uh, you have customers yeah. and you basically follow a lot of the same models that a commercial entity would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So, um, what challenges have you encountered so far along the way? Um, so, interestingly, it's whether it's a, a uh, purpose-driven organization or just a traditional organization you would find that they're very you would you would encounter very similar challenges um, the first one is um, kind of like who do you surround yourself with um, and it's not so much of a challenge it's just an opportunity to have um, a network of people that are that are, you surround yourself and that can allow you to not only learn more but also enjoy the journey so that um, I guess that's been one, identifying who are uh, the right people to do that with um, and the best way to approach them. Um, the second challenge, I'd say, is um, one of those things that every entrepreneur um, um, experiences, which is believing their own truth. So um, there is a, a thing about being persistent, but you've got to be persistent with caution. Um, and the, um, and I guess that reinforces my point of, of surrounding yourself with other people because they can allow you to say, yes, you are being persistent in, in the right approach, or maybe you should be um, tacking or and doing things differently. Okay, cool. So it's a bit of a combination because you have to drink your own Kool-Aid, but at the same point, you have to always keep that little bit of objectivity to say, is this the right thing to do or is this not? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think that's um, one of the most important things that entrepreneurs need to think about is how how stretchful do you go? Um, how much do I keep going in, in this journey, and when do I need to stop? Okay, great. And um, what have you learned along the way? The big some big learnings that you've had. Um, the very first one, which um, I think it's it's essential for anyone who's thinking about entrepreneurship is just dive in so there is everyone has ideas and lots of them are can be amazing but you don't know until you do them so the first one is dive in and it doesn't matter whether you know or not um i have learned through the process um so it's been um, amazing to discover that myself but also um it, it is a, an interesting thing that maybe before you launch, just have a bit of a uh, um, try to have a think about what that looks like from the other end. Um, the second one is again surround yourself with amazing people, um, and the third one have a bit of a vision. So yes, you want to do this, but so what? What's the impact that's going to have at the end? Um, and last one is that purpose-driven work pays off. Okay, so it does pay off. That's an important point, I think. Yeah. yeah at the end of the day. Um, so, what what sort of advice would you give to people who are thinking of setting up a startup, whether purpose driven or you know, commercial one? Mm -hmm. So, again, it's dive in um, or have a plan, um, and as soon as you have a semi structured um, plan, just dive in. The other thing that I would strongly recommend is make you make sure that you're comfortable 
being uncomfortable. Yeah. So um, being an entrepreneur is one of those things that um, will make you, will stretch you in every way that you can think of, um, and you just have to be comfortable in those situations. Okay, great. And would you do it again? Um, that is, so I w would normally say no, but every time I say no, I, I, as soon as I get an offer, I'd say yes. And I do have a couple of ideas and projects on, as a side projects that I have. So um, as much as I would fear to say yes, um, I guess I'll do it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. Well, thank you very much for your time, Alvaro. You're, we're clearly in a very busy uh, co-working space, so sorry about the background noise. Um, but thank you very much for your time. No, great to be here.